John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this one's super exciting for me to share with you guys because I know this is a video many of you guys have been waiting for for a long time. If you guys believe it or not, I have over $5,000 worth of juicers sitting on uh, both sides of me, right? It's insane. Like these are some of the high end, most expensive juicers on the market today, and it's often thought of as the uh, you know, dual stage or two stage hydraulic press style juicers are the best juicers in the world. And in some cases they are, and in some cases they may not be. But we're not gonna go over the merits, pros and cons of the hydraulic two stage press juicers today. What I do wanna go over for you guys, even a much more important factor if you guys are considering a two stage hydraulic press juicer. You know, I know a lot of you guys watching this, maybe what's on, maybe on the Gerson Therapy program and they specify that you get a two-stage hydraulic, uh, you know, press, cold press style machine. And so at this point in time, if you want an all-in-one unit, you have two options, right? You have the good old standby, the Norwalk. This is the brand new Norwalk that just recently came out this year. It's a Norwalk 290. In some ways, this is actually better and the best Norwalk they've ever produced, but in other ways, actually, it's actually, they're going backwards compared to some of the older Norwalks, actually. And then of course, over on this side, we have the Pure Juicer. And the Pure Juicer, as you guys are gonna discover in this video, in my opinion, blow away the Norwalk that's sitting next door. And actually, it's even less expensive. It's 15% less expensive than the Norwalk. So why would you guys wanna buy Norwalk when it's 15% more expensive and doesn't even work as well as you guys will see in this demo? Earlier today, I was playing with both these machines, right? And I saw the differences you know, as you guys will learn in this video when grinding, right? It just does not grind quite as effectively as the pure. In addition, when pressing, you can't press the high volume of juice. And in addition, it's not gonna get as much quantity when you're pressing. And I've experienced this and I will show you guys in this video and prove it. You know, I'm not just gonna sit here and talk to you because I'm not the manufacturer that's trying to sell you their juicer. I'm here as an independent, impartial third party and I am just a juicer myself, right? Juicing has saved my life, and it could save your life too. But the thing is, you have to do it each and every day, and you have to be committed. So whether that means buying a two-stage hydraulic press down machine, or whether that means buying a you know single-step machine where you just put all the stuff through, you got to get on this juice. The juice is the most healthiest food that you could be consuming on the planet, and we know that the processed foods, the junk foods, the animal foods in excess are those are some of the worst things to be putting in your body and the fruits and vegetables are simply the best. And the reason why the juicing works so well is because it literally allows you to take 10 pounds of carrots, right? And turn that into just two quarts of juice that now you can get all the nutrition out of those carrots into you. That's why I like juicing so much and hopefully you will too. Whether you buy one of these juicers or one of the other juicers that we offer at discountjuicers.com. So in this comparison, we're gonna go over all the different aspects of these machines and this is gonna be a really in-depth comparison. So, you know, sit back, <laughs> grab a juice, and uh, follow along, because this is gonna be a long video. And if this is too long for you, I would encourage you guys to check in the bottom corner, I forget which corner it's gonna be in, but there's a little like uh, gear, and click that gear, and then you could actually play this at two times speed, so you could get all the information in this video, and, um, and absorb it in a much faster rate if you don't wanna waste the time to spend all the time to watch this entire video. Furthermore, you could go ahead and jump to the end if you want to hear which juicer I will actually uh, you know, declare the winner of this juice off, if you just want to hear that. But I think it's really important for you guys to know all the little nooks and crannies and the differences between these two machines because after all, if you are buying one of these machines, you're investing you know, over $2,000 in, in either of these machines, right? And I mean, it's an investment worth making, right? Juicing saved my life, it could save your life too. And you know, especially if you're dealing with some kind of disease situation, you want to give yourself every possible advantage. And by buying, you know, a slow juicer, such as one of these cold press juicers, you will because you will give yourself higher qualities of nutrition. In any case, let's go ahead and get into basically some of the different uh, comparisons, like uh, physically, how these, ma how, ma how these machines are made, how they're constructed, even how they're shipped to you. And then we're going to kind of get into more of a comparison where we're actually going to weigh out even amounts of produce and juice, even amounts of produce in each machine so you guys could see the yield, but not just the yield, but you could see the process and how long it takes because um, that's also very important to me. So I guess uh, for starters, let's go ahead and start out, right? 
Both these machines, uh, you're gonna have to order generally online because there's no stores in their right mind. They're gonna actually uh, carry it in stock that you'll be able to go pick it up at. So they're gonna get shipped to you. So the number one thing that's very important when shipping a juicer, especially a juicer that ships at around 70 pound weight, right, is to ensure that it gets there properly. UPS guys, FedEx guys, you know, um, if, you, if you guys are out there watching, please handle the packages carefully. Unfortunately, uh, many times, even just the lighter juicers that I normally sell, 30 pound juicers, they get damaged in shipping, right? So it's very important that your prized possession, your investment makes it to you all in one piece. And just shipping the juicers here so I could do this comparison to you, you know, there's some damage that occurred. So, you know, uh, both these companies maybe operate in a different fashion. You know, Norwalk, I mean, they're an American owned company. They've been around. I mean, on their sticker it says, since 1934, they've been making these guys in the US for a long time. But just because they've been made in the US for a long time, does it mean they're actually improving and getting better all the time? Well, I would hope so that every company in America would always improve their products. But in my opinion, you know, I own two other Norwalks, you know, previous generation models, and they haven't been the best of operating things. So anyways, uh, in packaging, let me go ahead and show you guys the packaging. I'm not going to show you the whole box and everything, but I will show you this. Uh, over on the Pure, actually, they use this uh, polypropylene material, right? If we look at that, we could, we, could, we could crush it, we could bend it, we could like bend this in half. I mean, if, it, if we could kind of bend it, it's kind of strong. But see, it's not cracking and it's not breaking. So, you know, when there's an impact on the box, right, the, the juicer inside is going to be protected. Meanwhile, on the Norwalk, you know, they use uh, styrofoam and the polypropylene, that's, uh, you know, 100% recyclable. Uh, they use a styrofoam, which is not recyclable. You know, it's one of the worst things for the environment. And uh, if this one breaks or cracks, oops, <laughs> or twists, it just breaks, right? I mean, I could just snap pieces of this off. Oops, oh, we shouldn't have broke that. But um, this just breaks, right? So when there's an impact to this, this styrofoam stuff will break, and then the machine is going to be damaged, and it's going to get broken in shipment. And then what happens? You get a damaged machine. It may not work properly, right? It's damaged. You don't, you're, not, you're spending a lot of money, and you get a damaged machine. Then you got to ship it back. you got to wait for it to get back. Then you got to get a new one shipped to you. It's a big hassle. And these critical days, maybe the days you need to be getting that juice into you, you know, before you have uh, some other kind of health crisis. So, you know, I like that uh, Pure, along their journey, has continually been on an improvement process. And basically, uh, you know, what you'll learn is that you're going to find out in this video that the Pure juicer, basically, I don't want to say it's a Norwalk copycat, actually, I'm going to say it's a Norwalk improvement. They saw what Norwalk was doing for so many years. And I applaud Norwalk for making the Norwalk juicer for so many years. But the sad fact of the matter is, Norwalk hasn't really made any major improvements to their design in so long. The 290, a little bit different. They made some minor improvements. But up until now, you know, the Norwalk feed chute has been, you know, straight up and straight down. And if you ask most Norwalk owners that don't own the 290 or maybe one of the ones they made back in the 1930s that actually had an offset feed chute, they all have straight feed chutes. And if you fed the carrot wrong, poof, <laughs> it'd end up on your ceiling, right? And for all these years, Norwalk has had that same feed chute. But meanwhile, you know, the Pure Juicer just came out last year. Uh, some of the videos you've seen previous to this, I had a pre-production model and actually did some demos on it. They've always had the offset feed chute. So maybe because Pure came out with the offset feed chute, Norwalk says, hey, we need to come out with an off offset feed chute. Why haven't we done this earlier? That's a good question. Why hasn't Norwalk come out with an offset feed chute if they've known about it for all these years? Because some of the early models actually had it. I don't really know. But uh, anyways, uh, so Pure, they took kind of what the Norwalk was and they improved it and made their own version and actually even made it for less money. And that being said, you know, it has the same length of warranty, 12 years on either of these machines, right? That's one of the longest warranties in the juicer industry. And I want to encourage you guys, no matter what juice you buy, get a juicer with a long warranty because it's your assurance that the machine is going to last a long time. You know, some of the cheap imported juicers from China may have a 90 day, maybe a one year, maybe a two year warranty, but all the major brand juicers that we sell at Discount Juicers, you know, they usually have, I don't know, 10, 12, or even 15 years warranty. So 12 years, that's quite a long time. So these guys are built to last, you know, out of solid metal, unlike other, you know, of the uh, inexpensive plastic machines that are out there. Not to say that the plastic ones don't last, but Stainless steel, I mean, these things are quite durable. So as you'll learn, you know, there's some minor nuances where basically Pure saw something that maybe wasn't so good on the Norwalk and made it better. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys now. So first I wanna share with you guys 
uh, some of the different uh, things that come with the juicer, right? Super critical, super important. I mean, the first thing is the instruction manual. So this looks like a pretty nice instruction manual from Norwalk here. And inside the manual, you know, they have the different um, pages with all the instructions. But if we look inside here, we can look inside the, uh, the pure manual. And the manual inside here, I'll just flip open to this random page. I mean, look, they have nice full color pictures that like really go into detail about things. And, you know, there's not so many pictures in the Norwalk, you know. I mean, when I open the Norwalk, actually, I see like a lot of like really bolded print. Very important. Please read. This can save you much annoyance, frustration, disappointing results, and possible mechanical problems, right? Nobody wants to hear a lot of warnings in here. I mean, it has just more information without all these bolded yelling at you. I mean, just to that fact alone, I mean, we could like look at on the, on the side of the machine. There's a big, you know, note. It says, note, do not turn switch on unless housing is tight, right, up, right side up. And then on the top of this, there's like caution this. Warning crush hazard on the back. There's attention each time before raising press. Warning this, warning that. Man, it's almost like you're being scolded and you're a kid or something. But anyways, those are the instruction manuals. I mean, basically, I kind of like the pure one. So Norwalk, if you're watching this, hey, improve your instruction manual, please. Or maybe remove some of the yelling on the, on the casing. Just have a lot more information that could really uh, benefit people, right? Uh, getting down to the next step here, we got a few different parts. So, I mean, the main part of the first stage of the two-stage hydraulic press juicers is the grinding step, right? This is super critical, super important. As you guys can see, Norwalk comes with a one, two, three, four, can't pick these up, five, six, uh, seven different um, uh, grinding plates here. And all, each of these have different hole sizes, right? And uh, different hole sizes are good for uh, grinding different things. So, for example, the super small hole size on the Norwalk is for grains, and they got ones for uh, different kinds of nut butters, harder nuts, softer nuts, and they got ones for just grinding, um, you know, uh, if you're doing uh, sorbets, and they got some for grinding carrots and some for leafy greens and all this kind of stuff, right? And uh, on the Pure, actually, instead of just the seven, they got eight. And we're not going to go into all the specific sizes or what they do, but... I will say that the Pure Juicer actually doesn't have the smallest size that the Norwalk does. So on the Norwalk, they claim that you could uh, grind grains with this uh, grinding attachment. And, you know, that may or may not be the best idea. You know, I would encourage you guys, if you want to grind grains, don't use a Norwalk. Get a specified grain grinder that has like a stone mill. It's going to do much better uh, than trying to make your grinder in your Norwalk juicer grind grains. Um, so uh, the Pure Company has ones for different size nut butters and um, of course the juicing and all this stuff, but they also uh, re-engineered and uh, made the screen better than the Norwalk. So uh, for example, we'll take this screen here, which is a large screen on the Norwalk, right? That's a large screen on the Norwalk, and here's the large screen on the Pure. You guys see the difference? Well, the whole size, if I line them up, they're just about the same size. But if you look on the Pure, number one, it's a smaller screen, so that means you're gonna have less parts to clean or less area, less square area to clean. But uh, also you're going to notice it's around a full frame, right? So that looks pretty nice. On the uh, Norwalk there, it's like just, it, there's, 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 it's not a full frame, right? So like there's a little point right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if, if I push really hard, I'm going to prick my finger with this point. It's actually quite, oh shit, I, ow, I hurt my finger actually. I pricked my finger with this because it's quite sharp. I mean, minimally they should round these corners off or do something or at least be smart enough to make a frame. You know, so, I mean, uh, the Pure Juicer company basically stamps and makes each one of these. And I think the Norwalk, what they're doing is they got, they got, they buy big sheets of this kind of uh, uh, material and they just stamp out the size so that they don't have a frame. So that's, you know, number one, it's a, it's a hazard, uh, you know, to use and it's just not quite as clean. In addition, I mean, look at this. There's a lot of uh, wasted space in this screen. You can see like the space in here. There's a lot of frame around the hole. Now... Pure, what they did on this is actually they minimized the spacing because they made a custom uh, piece instead of just stamping out of a pre-made piece. They actually uh, stamped it really close so there's actually less hole space. And even in between the, the circles, they made additional circles to maximize the, the use of the screen so that it's going to be doing the best at grinding and leave the minimal amount of ground up produce in the blade so that it actually ejects out instead of stays in there and gets warm and hotter. So that, I really like that a lot. Let's see, looking next at uh, these two pieces, uh, these are the screen holders here. And, you know, at surface, they look to, and appear to be the same, but, uh, you know, one's larger and one's a little bit smaller. 
and uh, you know they're both uh, stainless steel. But if we go ahead and insert these, right, we'll, you'll see the difference. That's the one on the pure. It, it inserts totally flush. Here's the one on the Norwalk, right? We insert the one on the Norwalk, we push it in, and it's still hanging out by maybe like a quarter inch. I'm like, wait, maybe it's not pushed in all the way. I push it in all the way, it doesn't go in. And even furthermore, when we take a, a grid and we put it on there, we push it in, you see part of the grid right there. It's like, to me, that doesn't look like it's finished or pushed in, but this is just how the Norwalk's made. I don't know for whatever reason. Maybe they say, oh, you could pull it out by this, but it doesn't look super clean like that, right, to me. But on the, uh, on the pure, it, it, it just totally fits in flush, so it's a lot cleaner look. I mean, it just looks like it's just better designed. I mean, if norwalk has been making these guys since the 1930s, how come they still have, like, pieces that just aren't quite as, like, fit well? I, I don't really know. So, um, and this also has a nice little handle, right? You have a nice little handle. You can actually pull this out and pull this in. And with the Norwalk one, I mean, there's a kind of little handle, but it's really small. In addition, um, let's see, let's talk about some other things. So also the Pure Company, uh, Chooser Company, they give you this little thing. What's this little thing for? This, it's a little sleeve, right? So what this sleeve is used for is uh, if you pull off the housing here and your, uh, your juicing blade is on there, this little tool here comes on, you can put it on your juicing blade and pull your juicing blade out without cutting your fingers because this juicing blade is actually sharper than the Norwalk. The Norwalk does not come with any kind of a sleeve like this. They just say use some kind of towel, right, to uh, pull our blade off. So, you know, I mean, the Pure Juicing Company has thought of like all the things that Norwalk should have thought of, in my opinion. So that's really cool. It comes with this uh, little attachment here. Maybe we'll uh, put this aside because we're going to be talking about the parts next. But I wanted to also talk about the uh, press bags and press cloths. You know, for some people, like these press cloths and press bags are your lifeline, right? After you juice them, they need to be cleaned, uh, you know, fairly well. And then you could uh, put them in the freezer until you're going to use them the next time. But it's imperative that they work properly and work well. So, uh, you know, Pure has a Pure Juicer Company has gone out and spec special press cloths that are going to, you know, basically be more porous or actually let more flow at a faster rate through than the uh, Norwalk press cloths. Furthermore, uh, you know, I think uh, the Norwalk comes with uh, four bags and four cloths each, and the Pure actually comes with the. Uh, four bags, but they come with six cloths. So you get two additional uh, press cloths when you get the Pure Machine. Now, furthermore, if we inspect these bags, let's see, let's see on the bags, it's critical because the cloth is basically just a cloth that you need to fold over on itself. But the bag design is actually critically important. I know for a long time, Norwalk had a problem with people busting open the bags. And then when you bust open a bag on a, on a hydraulic press juicer, which is something you really don't want to do, I've done it before, and your pulp will spray everywhere, man. It could spray across the room like 20 feet, hit the wall. I mean, there's a lot of force behind it. Um, so you don't want bags to be broken. So let's see. Let's go ahead and show you guys the Norwalk. This is the Norwalk uh, press bag. Let me go ahead and get out a pure press bag here. And here's a pure press bag. So number one, if I had like a... Oh, this is a press cloth. Let me get out the bag. And here's the uh, pure uh, press bag here. So number one, if we kind of like look at the size, the Pure Press bag is uh, basically just a tad bit larger uh, than the Norwalk, and that's because, you know, the pressing plate, which we didn't even talk about yet, is actually larger than on the Norwalk. But furthermore, like just picking up this bag, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm a pretty good uh, judge of weight by just holding it. This is a little bit heavier duty uh, press bag than this one, which is a lot lighter. Furthermore, you know, one of the main reasons why these press bags fail is because the stitching on the bag is just insufficient. Maybe the threads aren't strong. Maybe they don't do good stitching on it for some reason. But uh, the stitching on here, if we guys look at the stitching, I don't know if you guys can see the difference on the stitching there. Let me try to hold it up close for you guys. But the stitching over on the uh, Pure Juicer, like it's double stitched and it just seems to be a lot more stronger. Like basically on the Norwalk bag, they got a single stitch with some kind of like pressing where they actually melted the fabric to kind of hold it together. Also the uh, press, uh, bags on the Pure, they're using a special kind of heavy-duty thread that the Norwalk company is actually just simply not doing. So this makes their bag significantly stronger so you have less problems with it. I mean, I think that's what we all want in a juicing when we juice is just we want to have the least amount of problems, the least amount of stress when we're juicing, and we don't have to want to worry about stuff. We just want to be able to make our juice, press it, juice it out with minimal challenges. So I like that the Pure Juicer Company has gone through and maybe made adjustments and, in my opinion, made the Norwalk better as you guys are learning. So uh, let's go ahead and go on to the main machines because these are just some of the accessories 
that come with it. Maybe we'll go ahead and uh, assemble this uh, back together here real quick. So the first thing that I want to show with you guys is actually probably the, one of the main, most important components of the two-stage hydraulic press-down machines are, is the grinding setup, right? The RPMs on both these are about the same, so you know that's pretty much the same. But aside from just the grinding speed, what's really important is actually the cutting blade. That's super critical. But before we get into the cutting blade, I want to talk about the, the feed chute housings, right? Uh, up until now, all modern day Norwalks produced after, I don't know, the 19, uh, I don't know, 80s or something, have had a, basically a straight feed chute, right? And when you got the straight feed chute that's not offset, things could, you know, basically spit up at you if you're not paying attention and holding your hand over it or feeding it a right way, right? So uh, for this year now, the 290 is now offset and basically, in my opinion, they copied the Pure because when the Pure was originally introduced, they've had that offset feed chute. But the, the differences between these machines are just a lot more than just that they both have an offset feed chute, right? Let's take a look at the pushers. I mean, the pusher is super critical. Here's the pusher on the Norwalk and here's the pusher on the Pure. You guys notice the difference? Yeah, the Pure uh, juicer actually has, it's a longer pusher. And in addition, the bottoms, right? You guys see the bottoms on that? The bottom on the Norwalk is a straight bottom, kind of like the champion pusher. <laughs> and then, but on the Pure juicer, it's actually curved, right? Because if the, uh, if the blade's going in there, right, this allows you, when the blade's spinning, to get even that little last little bit in there pushed into the blade. Whereas on the Norwalk, as you guys will see when I'm doing the juice off, um, the Norwalk will leave extra pulp right by the blade that it cannot push in because it doesn't have this little inset on the bottom there. So that, you know, just these small little details make a big difference. And don't worry, if you're someone like me that just kind of tries to shove that in any direction, this is not going to go because they have a little uh, a groove here notched. So you have to push this in the right direction so you're not going to grate down uh, the, the pusher there. So that's a big difference. Let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look at the funnels. Let's see if there's any major difference in the funnels. All right. The funnels are pretty much the same, actually. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to give the winning funnel to Norwalk. I like the Norwalk funnel a little bit better than the Pure because it's just a tad bit larger and it's a little bit deeper. So I find that that can help you to uh, you know, funnel things in if you're juicing like uh, cherry tomatoes or something or cherries in there, right? It's gonna be a little bit easier to catch, but this is for all practical purposes, not much different. Let's see if they fit on each other. <laughs> That'd be interesting. All right, the Norwalk funnel up is a little bit too big for the pure and the pure funnel will just simply not fit on the Norwalk. Or let's switch it back. All right, so the next thing is the uh, main housing here. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting, right? So on the pure juicer, basically they have a, no wing nuts or no kind of nuts to deal with. They have this really cool interlock system that you just press this little button that even if I'm not sitting in front of it, I can't really see what I'm doing. I could find this little button, press it, and I twist this, and it just comes off. Super simple, super easy. Meanwhile, over on the Norwalk, like they've had for, I don't know, <laughs> hundreds of years, dare I say, or 80 years, they have these uh, little wing nuts. Actually, the prior generations of the 290 actually had wing nuts that you could actually hand tighten and hand loosen. And as much as I don't like wing nuts, this was pretty good because you didn't need actually any kind of tool to take these nuts off. Unfortunately, with the new 290, they've maybe improved this <laughs> by having these special nuts that actually, with my fingers, and I'm a pretty strong guy, I can't even ah, twist these or hurt my fingers. So they give you a little wrench tool. And I mean, I'm sorry, if you guys are spending like $2,500 plus, on a juicer, they should not give you like a little tool like this that looks like an Ikea tool that comes when you're trying to build one of those desks or something from Ikea. Maybe the good news is if you lose one of these, you could go to Ikea and they might have spares. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you need this special tool and if you lose this tool, guess what? You can't take your juicer apart to use it or clean it or do anything with it. So we're gonna, go and then furthermore, if I was making this and I was Norwalk, I would have made like this tool a lot thicker and maybe with a nicer handle or something like that, right? Anyways, to take this apart, you need this tool. You need to put it in there and uh, wrap it around. Let's see if I could even get that on there. And then you could spin these little nuts off, right? And uh, this is a little bit, a little bit more challenging to do than on the, a lot more challenging to do than on the pure. Actually, let me see if I'm. This is a little bit challenging without looking at it. Actually, yeah, just not a really well designed tool in my opinion. All right, so we got that loosened, and now we can finally spin that piece off. All right. So at first glance, you might think, John. You know, those two feed chute housings, they look pretty similar, right? Well, you guys aren't here holding them because I'm holding one and I'm holding the other and one is 
you know, a lot heavier. The Norwalk one is like, whoa, it's actually, it's kind of slipping out of my hand. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at, see that slipping out of my hand. But the, uh, it's a lot heavier than the pure one. And, then, and I don't know why this is. Maybe they just didn't design it right. Maybe they don't have CAD, you know, software in their Norwalk factory where they design stuff. It's just a lot heavier. So I know this can be challenging for people with arthritis or people that are getting up there in their age and may not want to handle big, heavy items. And what I thought I'd do is actually, I wanted to weigh these uh, items or, you know, to see. So we got a scale here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, punch that on. And uh, so on the uh, pure juicer feed chute, let's go ahead and put the units to um, grams. That's 1,598 grams on this guy. And then over on the Norwalk, it's significantly heavier. And th don't even think about dropping this on your toe. It's going to hurt bad. Wow. It's uh, 2,064 grams. So that's like 500 grams more. 500 grams is about a pound. So it's about a pound heavier. Something for you having to uh, deal with and lift up and whatnot. And so furthermore, you know, if we look at this, they look kind of about the same, but if you kind of look at uh, down the feed chutes, you guys probably can't see that too much. But the, uh, the thickness of the feed chute is a little bit thinner on the pure. Now, in my opinion, that's a good thing because that reduces the weight. It doesn't need, the feed chute doesn't have to be thick. I mean, this is already like a stainless steel. It's really not gonna break or bust out. And then furthermore on the bottom, pretty much the same thing, right? And oh, an interesting thing here is it looks to me that like on the, uh, oh, this is the bottom actually. It looks to me like on the bottom, look at this. Watch this, this is kind of fun. The pure bottom, we can take it and slip it over the Norwalk though, and it almost slips inside there because the uh, pure juicer is kind of made an addition that the Norwalk doesn't have. Actually, if, if you look at it, it's flared on the bottom. So if you see those like megaphones when you're like at the game and they're like, talking to you like this, it's kind of like that. And when this is flared, that means the, the pulp is going to eject a little bit easier than, uh, than this one that's not flared because it's not getting wider. It's just kind of like the same dimension. See, so there's small things about the pure that they've done. Uh, in addition, if you guys look at that, like this is why this is a lot lighter because you can see in here, it's like, uh, you know, just the way they designed it is just really smart. And uh, this is just a re really big, thick, solid piece. I mean, I don't think there's any other major uh, differences between these guys. They got some built-in safety magnets. But, uh, oh, the other thing I want to talk about is the front here. So the front here, look at this. Do you guys have like the like kitchen door cabinets at your house? Does it kind of look like that? Like those little pull knobs to open your drawer? <laughs> But that's pretty much what Norwalk is using uh, to hang the bags on is like a kitchen door pull, looks like to me. Whereas on the uh, Pure Juicer, there's no like door pull on here. It's like really nice and sleek, looks a lot cleaner. What they use instead is a lot more intelligent. They actually have on that little uh, slider that holds your screen. You slide that in and then actually this is your little uh, lever or, you know, to pull it out. But also that is where you would hang your bags. So a lot more intelligent on the design. Yeah. Now the next part I want to go over actually is the cutting blade. This can make all the difference in the world and as I learned a little bit earlier when I was using these machines, you know, one of these machines is a lot more efficient in cutting and grinding than the other. So let's go ahead and pull the uh, blade off here on the Norwalk and let's go ahead and pull the blade off here on the Pure. So I don't know if you guys can see those right, but uh, basically on the Norwalk I'll tell you guys, there's one, two, three, four, five cutting blades. And the cutting blades, I mean, they're not super sharp like a knife, so, you know, I mean, if you ran your finger along this, like, you know, a lot, you could probably somehow cut your finger. But basically, this is the same style design they've used for, I don't know, 50 plus years now. Whereas the, uh, uh, the Pure, they basically said, well, hey, the Norwalk design is cool, but hey, how can we make it even better to be more efficient? Because one of the challenges I see with, uh, you know, uh, grinding style machines is, especially if you're producing a lot of juice, or especially you've had the same grinding blade for a long time, you know, it'll actually start to heat up. And you know, I've had it sometimes where people put like ice blocks on the outside of their machine to keep the pulp that they're generating, or maybe they're doing the frozen banana sorbet or ice cream. They're trying to keep it colder in there. And so I think, you know, with the new uh, pure style design, and instead of just having the one, two, three, four, five blades, they got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blades, right? That's almost twice as many blades to do the cutting. So for every, re every revolution, you're getting significantly more cuts than what the old style blade. Uh, furthermore, that, you know, Pure is taking it to the next level. The original production, pre-production version I saw didn't have this, but now their new version does. Their new blades are now serrated, right? These serrated blades even give more uh, cutting surface area 
to cut the produce up and do an even more efficient job at cutting, right? And here's the thing, on any hydraulic press juicer that's doing a press, whether that's a hydraulic press or whether it's a mechanical press, right? The finer grind, the finer you could turn the produce into a baby food mush, right? The more juice you're gonna extract out of it. And that's just one of the ways that you're gonna extract more juice out of it. So they got the grinding part totally down pat. So what does that leave us with now? Now we got, that's the first stage, and now we got the second stage, which is the pressing stage of the machine. Another stage that is super critical and super important. So uh, let's see, just looking at these parts here, here's the, uh, the basically the tray for the pure, and here's the tray, oops, wait, I can't pull it out easily. <laughs> well, that's good, we got this little thing in the back, all right, we'll show you guys that. And here's the tray for the Norwalk here. So, you know, once again, at first glance, they may appear to be similar. Yeah, John, those trays look totally the same. I mean, they're almost the same size and they're both made out of stainless steel and blah, blah, blah. But if you guys take a look a little bit closer, let's go ahead and maybe hold them side by side. If we hold them side by side, you guys will see like clearly, you know, the uh, pure press, uh, you know, uh, tray is a little bit larger than the Norwalk, right? The other thing you'll notice is like on the back of the Norwalk, there's this little tab and this might be cool, hey, if you're, done cleaning your Norwalk, you can actually hang it up in your uh, kitchen to dry. But the other thing is that when, every time you put this on, there's this little tab here that you actually gotta put this back too far and then bring it forward. And so that's a little bit minor inconvenience where I was on the pure, you just actually set it down, it just sets in place so there's no clip to fumble around with. But furthermore, the other thing I noticed when I was juicing a large quantity of juice a little bit earlier, is if we look at the, if we look at the uh, little spout there, right, where the juice falls out, and you guys will see this when I'm juicing, but I want to share this with you now, so you might want to look for it when we are juicing these machines. But if you look at the funnel, uh, the little pour spout on the Norwalk, it's, it kind of comes down to a little V, right? It's like a, a little V. And, uh, you know, when, when the juice comes out of the V, it kind of like goes every different direction, right? And so that may miss the jar, or may kind of make more splashes and all this kind of stuff. And this is something not too difficult to, to fix, right? So what the Pure Company has done, they've actually gone in here, instead of just making a simple V, and I'm sure making a V is a lot easier when processing the metal to make it into a V, instead of cutting out a special like U, and then even more than just cutting out a special U or bending the U, however they do it in these factories, they actually have a little lip, so it comes down to a U, and then they actually have a nice little pour lip on it. And I wish that this, this pour lip was actually on every you know, measuring cup that I pour juice, that I juice into so I could pour it out without any drips, right? So yeah, it's just these small fine details that make the, the pure juicer a much better machine in my opinion. Now let's see, the next part of the juicing apparatus is the pressing plate, and that's this plate right here. And this is where there's some major differences between the Norwalk, and this is their new one that just came out this year, and the pure here. Uh, both these guys are now removable on previous Norwalks, they may have not been removable. And you might be thinking, John, those are both press plates, man. They both do the same thing. They basically just hold that little tray to jam it up into the top to get the juice out. Well, you'd be right. Um, you know, one of these is definitely heavier and one is lighter. <laughs> and the one that's actually lighter is the Norwalk. Now, is this a good thing to be lighter on this part? In my opinion, no, because this press plate, there's a lot of pressure that's going and transferring onto this press plate. So it's, a, it's of utmost importance that this press plate is as strong and as durable as possible to prevent breakage, right? And especially uh, it, breakage due to user error if they're not using the machine right or whatever. So I'd like to say on the Pure Juicer, this unit is 100% stainless steel. And more importantly than just 100% stainless steel, it's stainless steel one piece. This is a work of art here. And you know, this is why some of these machines cost in excess of $2,000 because I mean stainless steel ain't cheap and to get a nice one piece stainless steel like this I mean, this is a pretty penny but yeah this is one piece of solid stainless steel machine out as you guys can see in the bottom they got this little gritting and that kind of adds you know rigidity to it in addition it's also polished so let me see if you could see the camera in it well there's the camera <laughs> but um anyways uh, yeah so you can see yourself and use it as a mirror you know <laughs> and this one is actually just, just a dull aluminum uh, aluminum, you know, will, uh, you know, can corrode, even aluminum can corrode over time if you get juice spilled on it and whatnot. The stainless steel, that will never happen to. In addition, besides just being stainless steel, this is now a hardened stainless steel, so it's nice and strong, right? So this means it's much more rigid and has significantly more strength than an aluminum piece. And I think somewhere along the line, Norwalk knew that their aluminum piece 
had some challenges. So they knew on their they knew on their new 290 model they needed to do something about it. So they did. So I'm happy about that. So what they did on top of their aluminum uh, press plate here, they have a little stainless steel uh, plug that actually goes in uh, to the motor shaft that actually rises up or whatever. And then they actually have a stainless steel washer with uh, five, four screws that actually hold this piece on. So they got a stainless steel piece attached to the aluminum piece. And then furthermore, new for their 290 anyways, they have actually a little guide. Previously they had a little, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, little tube that came out here that would be the guide and actually there's still a little hole for where it would go. But now they have this little, uh, little uh, not notch here that guides the juicer up and down. But this is actually something that the, the uh, pure juicer already had. So did Norwalk copy the pure juicer on this fact? Is that is that saying like Norwalk's saying, hey man, the pure juicer is better. We need to kind of maybe make ours better. You know, I don't really care who came up with this idea or all these ideas first. I just care that the customer in the end gets the best product that's going to make it the easiest for them to use. And I don't really care who does it. And I'm just here to show you guys the differences, right? So you guys can be an informed consumer. You know, to date, I've made over 500 YouTube videos on this channel comparing all the different juicers on the market so that you guys can make an informed decision, right? I think it's sad that a lot of companies try to pull the wool over your eyes, literally, you know, and just get you to buy their machine because they say, oh, ours is the best. We've been making it since the 1930s. It's the best. Well, unfortunately, you know, other, other American companies that make juicers, which are far and few in between, I think there should be more. The Champion Company recently came out with their new Champion Juicer, you know, just last year. And in my testing, it actually performs way poorer than some of the imported juicers, which I think is quite sad, right? And so I want American companies to start improving the quality of any product that they make so that America be great again. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's this uh, piece right here. I guess that leads us down to the main body of the whole uh, machine, which is the, uh, you know, the motor assembly and and all the framing and all this kind of stuff. And this is where it gets kind of interesting here. Let's move some of these parts out of the way so you guys can see. Um, so both these machines are quite heavy. So especially if you're older, you're gonna probably wanna maybe get somebody to help you set it up. And once you set it, you're gonna set it up and you're gonna forget it because you're probably not gonna wanna move it. These things are quite, quite, oh, quite heavy, right? Uh, but they're nice and stable. And rigidity of these machines are super critical and super important. Because, you know, these machines are pressing with a lots of force, right? And as you guys will see in a minute, we're going to test and show the force that each one of these machines can generate. And actually, as you'll see in a minute, you know, the pure juicer actually generates more force uh, than the Norwalk here. And if you look really close at the Norwalk when you're running it, right, the Norwalk, some of the framing, it actually flexes because it's not quite as strong. And the pure juicer people, you know, they, hey, they own Norwalk juicers in the past and they saw some of the challenges. They saw hey, this Norwalk juicer, it's flexing when we're running the motor and we're pressing things out. Why is, why is that going on? Why haven't they fixed this in over 80 years now that they've been making them, right? And so the pure juicer took it upon themselves to, hey, we can make this better. We can make it so that our juicer does not flex. And when our juicer does not flex, that means there can be more pressure applied to the pulp because some of that flexing is, is lost power, basically. And so they've done a really good job at uh, basically strengthening uh, you know, the framing of the top and the bottom of the machine so there's less flexing so that's number one and actually to that point i've actually have uh, uh the parts that actually make up some of the frame on these two machines so i want to show you guys that so basically what i have here is a plate and this is the basically the top uh and the bottom plate of the pure juicer so they have this one plate right here and the one plate right here and it's either you know going this direction or going this direction they do modern modern uh, you know, small modifications of whether it's going on the bottom or the top. But as you guys can see, there's nice like ribbing on this. And actually this uh, piece is actually where the press goes. And if it's face down, it, it, it faces down. But uh, this is actually a really strong, significant piece. And I don't know, I mean, I'm not strong enough to sit here like to take and try to bend it, but it's really not gonna bend. It's totally like reinforced and really thick. And uh, here's the one on the Norwalk, right? The one on the Norwalk, it's uh, significantly thinner. So if you guys place those up, between one another. I mean, this is at least like, a, I don't know, two thirds uh, thicker. This is a lot thinner and it, it doesn't quite have like all the strength and rigidity as you guys can see that the pure does. So, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot more heavy duty. So yeah, that's important because, you know, it's the bottom and the top of these juicers that actually hold it together, right? And furthermore, if we, if we showed you guys the bottom of this, I don't know if I could do that for you guys, let me tip it up, all right? So if you guys look on the bottom, you guys probably can't see that and I can't sit there and hold it up because these guys are heavy. 
and we'll do it on this guy too. You could freeze frame the video if you really guys want to stop and see this. But if we look at the bottom of these juicers, um, anyways, on the pure here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six uh, major bolts that really make this frame, uh, you know, stable and hold this machine all together. And if I basically, maybe I'll do this on the Norwalk here. I'll pull this back. And if I show you guys on this one, the main bolts are one, two, three, four. So there's only four bolts that hold this uh, frame of the Norwalk together. Meanwhile, there's six bolts that hold this, the pure juicer together. And the main ones that hold the uh, Norwalk together are these little uh, bars that come up here. That's the main four points. But the one on the pure, you know, it's not just simply four bars. It's a much more rigid system that gives us a lot more strength and durability. And so I like that a lot. Now let's see, uh, going on more about the motor base here. Let's see, some of the other differences are, uh, there's this little pad. This, may, this little pad may not look like a lot to you, but basically every time you juice, you need to put a bowl against this, uh, your stainless steel, and this pad prevents a marking of your stainless steel finish, right? Once again, Norwalk's been making these guys for a long time and they have no pad here. So, you know, once using the same bowl against the Norwalk, you're gonna get like a nice line, maybe even potentially some dents in the Norwalk because it's not being protected. So you gotta come up with your own pad to protect it. Uh, let's see, other than that, I mean, both now nowadays have the IEC core to plug in. Uh, this is the first year that Norwalk now has had this. Um, from the get-go, the Pure Juicer has had this. So this makes it to use the standard like uh, core that your desktop computer might be using. So that's a little bit cooler. Uh, let's see. Oh man, the other thing that's super uh, huge and super important that I didn't show you guys yet, and it's a little bit hard to do that, but I want you guys to notice like the framing on this. Like if we turn this to one side, and that's the side with the uh, on and off switch, we'll turn the pure to one side, and look at that. Like on the Norwalk, like there, there's these like, uh, you know, basically square corners, right? On the pure, it's nice and round. So this is kind of more of a modern design. I mean, after all, Norwalk's been around for like since the 19, I don't know, 30s or something. But so this is not quite as uh, nice looking, you know, as this is with the nice round corners. It looks a lot more sharp, right? In addition, if you guys look, hey, John, where are the screw holes holding all these parts together? Well, this is basically a screwless design for the most part. I mean, I don't see any external screws. Oh, uh, there's a few in the back. There's like six that basically hold this uh, panel on the back. But on the Norwalk, you know, there's one, two, three, four that hold this panel on. On the back, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 13, 14, 15. There's all these screws that actually, and the problem with the screws is that number one, they look unsightly. And number two problem is if you like drip juice in there, the juice could get down in between the screw, behind the screw, and in the screw. And it, that could be really a difficult thing to clean even more so than just the screws that hold the case together, which is not a super big deal. I think the big deal about the screws is if we turn this juicer upright, I mean, you guys can, probably can't see this too much, but on there basically the press plate that actually uh, hits the produce, they basically have four screws that hold this press plate uh, in place. So when you're pressing out the juice, you know, um, this is a food contact area, so juice may get up and, and pulp may get up into, these, into this splash zone area and a juice or pulp may collect in these screw tops, in which case they probably won't get clean because that'd be hard to clean, so bacteria may develop and grow. And that could be a food safety issue, so I do not recommend using a Norwalk juicer in a commercial juice bar establishment because that may violate some kind of health code. Meanwhile, if you take a look at the Pure, right, they designed this right, right? If I could, I could sh tip this back, and you guys probably can't see that anyways, but up in here, there's basically no screws that hold this piece on, right, and that's because this piece right here is one piece. It, it's this piece, it's a U. It's this piece, this piece, and this piece. It's all one piece on the pure juicer. So there's like no nooks or crannies where juice is gonna drop and get down into the motor and potentially ruin the motor, all this kind of stuff. It's one whole piece, so that's really cool. And meanwhile, over on the Norwalk, we're taking a look at this, right? They got this piece here, they got this piece here, they got this piece here, it's even inset in here. I mean, there's so many different nooks and crannies here that are just so much more difficult to clean should your bag explode or should you raise your juicer too fast and juice starts dribbling everywhere. And let me tell you, that's definitely bound to happen on a two-stage hydraulic press. You will do this at one point or another. So do you want an easier time of cleaning with the Pure or do you want a little bit more challenging time to clean it on the Norwalk because you know it's, a, it's an old company they've been making them in America for so long, right? I think some new technology and better technology has uh, come along.
Let's see, the part that you really can't see at this point because it's all inside the machine is a little uh, arm that comes up when it's pressing out and it's a lot larger. It's, I think it's like 30 millimeters on the Pure and it's uh, 25 milli millimeters on the Norwalk. So that extra area gives you more force and it's a much more durable and stronger part that's gonna have less play in it, you know, as it raises and lowers. And how that's gonna translate, that's gonna translate into more power and more pressing power and we'll be testing that in just a little bit. I don't know if there's any other major things that I want to point out. I mean, to me this thing looks like it's kind of like pieced together and it, you know, with all these screws, it looks like it was made in like the 1930s and this kind of looks more modern. I mean, if you guys look at that, I mean, which one really looks nicer to you, right? I mean, it's evident to me that the Pure Juicer is a lot more cleaner. It doesn't have these little wing nut things that you need that special tool for. It has all the nice rounded corners. I mean, oh, and then they have this actually nice plate here. Actually, that's a huge thing. They have this one-sided uh, one plate here that goes right up the middle. So that this allows you to have easier access, you know, to your juicing pressing area. Whereas if we look on the Norwalk on, this, on the side, right? Look at that. We'll do these both side by side, actually. So you guys could see that. So on this machine, you could access it, you know, from this direction or this direction. On this one, you have, you know, two poles on the corner, so you can't kind of get at it diagonally. And then you got that little rod here in the center, so you could you could barely get your fingers in this direction. Now I do want to caution you guys: if you guys have small kids, I do not recommend getting a two-stage hydraulic press juicer. You know, as it says right on here: warning, crushing hazard. Keep hands and fingers clear of press area when raising and lowering the press. If you have kids, be sure that you are there watching when you're pressing the juice in a two-stage hydraulic press juicer. You do not want to get your hands anywhere in this area uh, when pressing. And actually, along with that, about pressing, another thing that I want to mention actually really quick as we have it open, if we look at the side, the spacing between you know, here and here, it's fairly large. If we look at the spacing between here and here, it's a lot shorter, it's a lot smaller. So what does this mean? This means you're gonna have a little bit easier access to pull your pulp bags in and out. You're gonna actually be able to put bigger pulp bags that are a little bit more inflated, you know, um, or puffy inside this unit uh, than this unit. Oh, and I, I don't think I actually I held this up actually to show you guys when I did this. When I show you guys the press plates that go on top there, if you hold these up like side by side, you guys can see that the, uh, the pure juicer press plate is a little bit bigger, right? So it has more pressing area, so you can press out more juice at one time. Maybe like uh, roughly 15% uh, larger. So I think that's a run through on all the major parts. Oh, I guess we could talk about the lever here. There's a lever here on the pure, and there's a basically a lever here um, on the Norwalk. This lever looks like to me like right out of the 1930s. I don't think they, they changed the design since the 1930s. It looks like one of those little levers that's on a tripod that you would actually crank up and it's maybe not quite as user friendly as the one on the Pure that actually you know has a nice little lever that you could easily grab and so yeah these are just small minor details that the Pure Juicer company has worked out and unfortunately it doesn't look like the Norwalk has, has changed much since they were originally made in the 1930s. I think the next thing I want to do is actually I want to go ahead and get these juicers back assembled so we could actually do some kind of pressure testing so you could actually see the power differences you know, on these machines and see why, you know, the Pure Juicer was, was designed with the 30 milliliter, uh, millimeter a rod to go up and down and, and how the strength of this really allows it to not flex as much as the Norwalk and I actually have special tools today to show you guys the power of these two machines. So in the next part of this review, I want to geek out with you guys a little bit and we're going to use a special uh, tool to measure to find out which one of these juicers actually have more physical pressing power, right? It's one thing to see on a piece of paper or on some advertising from a company that, hey, our juicer has X tons of pressing power, whether that's eight tons or whatever. You know, the manufacturer may be making arbitrary numbers up for all we know, because unless you have this special uh, gauge here that we'll talk about in a second, you'll never know the pure pressing power. So actually, I wish I had this gauge maybe just a little bit earlier this year to you know, check another press that says they have eight tons of pressing power, which seems like an awful lot of pressing powers, I mean, I don't know how they're not bending metal and breaking things because as you guys will see in this segment, right, one of these juicers is definitely more powerful than the other and you're going to learn that, you know, by looking at this meter and even more important than just looking at the, the meter, uh, the force gauge here, we're also going to use like just a standard ruler, right, just sitting on top of the machine to see which one of these machines flex more, right? If the machine's not properly designed and, and made well, you know, it's gonna have a lot of flex, and when there's flex, that means that's lost power that could be pressing out 
more juice. And if there's flex, that means the machine is more likely to fail or break on you, right? So maybe for that reason, they may have to reduce the power and not press as hard because they're scared of breaking their machine. So maybe that is why a machine may be underpowered because the machine is just not designed to handle all the pressing force. I mean, one of my Norwalks is actually an older version. And I do know that my older version Norwalk actually has more pressing force power than even this new 290 that just came out this year in 2017. So uh, let's go ahead and set up these. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this standard ruler up on top. And what I want you guys to do on this ruler here is this ruler, you can see how it's set right now, right? It's just set up on top and we'll do a close up for you guys when I'm actually doing this. And you guys are gonna see this ruler actually rise up because this whole top plate of the neural will be flexing and that's not a good thing. We don't want flex in a juicer. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and set up this force gauge. And how this force gauge works is, if you've ever been to the carnival or whatever, oops, and I pressed this machine on by accident because these buttons are not like, uh, you know, they're, they're too easy to push, right? That's never gonna happen on the pure because they have an, a recessed button that's not easy to, oops, <laughs> bump up against like I just did. But anyways, how this force gauge works is, you know, uh, if you've ever been to a carnival and they have that big hammer that you hit that hammer against the thing and then you have that ball go up that tries to ring that bell, right? We've seen these in movies and whatnot. I haven't seen those recently though. But anyways, that's how this works, right? The more force and pressure that's exerted on this little red button, if you press this down, if I was Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, I could make this little dial move and that shows the total force. And this shows, uh, shows it in pounds per square inch and I probably, I'm probably not strong enough to make it move anyways. But uh, one of these juicers should be. So first we're gonna go ahead and set this guy up in the Norwalk to find out uh, you know, how much uh, physical pressure is exerted because the more pressure exerted, uh, to your pulp, the drier your pulp will be. So in general, you want a, a juicer that presses uh, more than less. So we're gonna find out which one of these juicers, whether it's the Norwalk is more powerful or the Pure is more powerful right now. So let's go ahead and set this guy up. Super simple, super easy. We're just gonna go ahead and set this up right in the middle of the press. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this machine on and we're gonna go ahead and pump this up and we're gonna go ahead and give you guys a close up on the shot as it moves. All right, so you guys can see the press going up and I wanna show you guys the maximum on the meter here. So the meter dial, it's right in between 1500 and 2000. So to me, it looks to be at like about 1750, if you guys could see that. And uh, the, that's per pounds per square inch and that works out to be about 1.75 tons. So when you're pressing juice in the Norwalk, you get 1.75 tons of e effective uh, pressing force. Now the other thing I want to demonstrate while we're doing this is we got that ruler up on top here and I want you guys to see as we uh, turn the Norwalk lower and higher, I want you guys to see the movement right in here. Do you guys see that movement? Look really closely right in the middle. We're going to do that back and forth and you guys can see literally the top of the Norwalk moving and bowing like up and down, up and down, but look really closely right up there, right? You guys see the movement? Look at the spacing in between the top of the Norwalk and this, uh, the ruler there. You can see it getting more and getting less if you look really closely. So yeah, that's some of the movement. And we're gonna duplicate this next on the Pure to see if we can get any movement. And also, we're gonna go ahead and see the total pressing power on the Pure. All right, so now we got the gauge to test the pure, as you guys can see, it's going up and now it's maxed out and look at that. The uh, Norwalk was between 1500 and 2000. The pures went up all the way to like a little bit, a little bit past 2500, so that's pretty good. And now I want you guys to look at the ruler up here as we pump that up and down, right? Can you guys see that? We see a little bit of movement, but that's significantly less movement than we saw in the Norwalk. So if we converted the uh, 2,500 PSI into tons, it'd be converted out to about 2.5 tons on the pure juicer. So that's three quarters of a ton more power on the pure with uh, significantly less movement. So now we're all set up and ready to juice in both the pure juicer and the Norwalk 290 juicer. As you guys can see, we got the collection cup to collect the juice. We got bowls to collect the pulp. And of course, most important of all, we have the produce to juice. So what we're gonna be juicing today is a standard uh, Gersten style juice, because I know that's what many of you guys would be juicing if you got one of these machines. And we're gonna see if the, if the power of the uh, pressing on the Pure, which is actually better than on the Norwalk, if that actually translates into more juice or not. <laughs> so what we got here is we got the carrots and the apples, and we got about 1,500 grams of each of them. 
And I want to go ahead and give you guys a close up on the scales so that you guys can ensure we have a clean, fair fight today. All right, so let's go ahead and do a close up on the scales. Once again, over on that pure juicer there, got the carrots and got the apples. Looks like we got a total of 1,500 grams produce in there, equal weights of carrots and apples. Over on the side of the Norwalk 290, once again, carrots, even number of carrots and even amount of apples. Once again, 1,500 grams on both scales, as you guys can see. So now that you guys saw we have a fair fight, we're gonna go ahead and move these scales out of the way, move some of the produce out of the way. And uh, what we're gonna do next is actually we're gonna go ahead and bring up my iPhone. <laughs> so I always like to do for you guys is actually do a stopwatch to see you know, which juicer takes longer uh, to run. So we're gonna go ahead and put our stopwatch up there so you guys can see the actual time elapsed it takes to juice in each juicer. Maybe one might take longer than the other. I mean, one of the things that maybe I haven't really pointed out or have pointed out is that the area between the pressing plate and the uh, top part that uh, presses it actually is a lot larger than on the Norwalk. Plus, this is more powerful, so that means you could actually press more at one time. So how this is gonna work is actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and first do the grinding. So we're gonna grind all the produce in one of the juicers. Then once we grind all the produce, then we're gonna go ahead and take uh, two cups, you know, uh, two level cups here, and uh, fill each press bag with two cups. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold properly the press bag and uh, put it inside the juicer. And then we're gonna go ahead and juice. Now, because the area of the pressing area here, the pressing chamber, if you will, is actually larger on the pure, and because there's more power on the pure, you could actually fit three press bags uh, full of produce. Each press bag approximately uh, has about 500 grams of produce. So with the 1,500 uh, that we're uh, juicing today, we could actually fill three press bags and press all three bags in one pressing. Unfortunately, on the Norwalk, because of its uh, smaller pressing chamber, and maybe because the motor is not quite as powerful, uh, we're only gonna be able to actually fill two press bags up and uh, fit it in the chamber and then we're going to go ahead and have to press that last 500 uh, grams uh, separately so this is going to make us take longer uh, to juice in the norwalk i guess so oh and then the other thing we're doing of course we're going to go ahead and time that so you guys can see the exact differences and of course you're also going to get to see the whole process and see the difference in the yields so i think what i'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started with the norwalk first and uh, I think the first thing to do is uh, maybe, let's go ahead and move this over a little bit. And this is the one we'll be using for the Norwalk. And uh, let's make sure that you guys can see the timer here. So before I start juicing, what I wanted to do for you guys is actually uh, turn on each of the juicers to show you guys actually how fast they raise and how fast they lower, as well as how loud each of the machines are before we actually start to get juicing. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the Norwalk here. And so this is how loud it is. And I want you guys to look at that uh, pressing uh, plate here in the press area. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on and look how long it takes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012. I started a little bit late, but a 12 count to get up and let's count down. Okay, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. All right, maybe like two and a half seconds to come down. Next, let's go ahead and try the same thing on the pure. Turn this baby on. And you can hear how loud that is. We're gonna go ahead and crank this up and start counting. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012, 1,013. All right, looks all the way up. So the time going up is about the same when it's empty, uh, but when it's closed, it may be differently because we're gonna be filling that little chamber. Oh, and then when I let it down, I, I forgot to count, you know. But anyways, as you guys saw, when it came down, it came down significantly faster uh, than the Norwalk. Let's go ahead and turn this baby off here. Now let's go ahead and get into the juicing. So I explained how it's gonna work. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn the Norwalk on and hit the start, or we're gonna hit the start here. And we're gonna turn the Norwalk on and get juicing here. Just start feeding the produce in. Uh, one of the things 
things I want to say is that I'm trying to feed the produce in and it's not maybe the, being the easiest going in. Maybe it might be different on the pure, but always when you feed in the produce, you want to try to feed it to that side. So uh, give me a little bit of a challenge this year. All right, and we got a little bit of spray up. I don't know if you guys saw that. So despite the offset feed chew, maybe because they're cutting blade, it's still maybe not uh, optimally designed. So we grated up all the carrots. Let's go ahead and continue to grate up the apples here. I don't know why this Norwalk just seems so difficult to push the produce in. <laughs> Harder than some juicers I've used in the past. All right, there we go. tap that a little bit because I know there's some extra stuff in the feed chutes not coming out. Just look on this screen here. It's even coming out the nooks and crannies of the screen so we'll knock that down into our bowl there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this out of the way and we're going to take one of their press bags. As I talked about earlier, you know their press bag. One of the interesting things is, uh, oops this is the wrong press bag. I mean the other ones. <laughs> yeah these press bags, see, one of the things I noticed is you know, while it may be sewn on the middle seam, the bottom seam is actually not sewn. It's just kind of like uh, welded in there or kind of melted. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fill up uh, basically the pulp in here. So we're going to go ahead and take basically about uh, two uh, level scoops. One. Two. And uh, normally you might want to like hang the press bag onto the thing, but in order to you know be even on both juicers, we're going to go ahead and do it separately like this. And then you want to fold the press bag over and uh, put it on the juicer there. So we're going to go ahead and maybe fill the press bags inside the little container there all right once again we got to take two cups you know let me tell you from coming from using a single stage juicer like I normally do you know using a two stage juicer it's a little bit messier and that's just part of the process right every juicer has their pros and cons and I'm just here to show you guys like what happens when you try to juice in different ones all right so we got pretty much just about two cups maybe we'll put a bit more in there all right, so now we got this full all the way. And very important to make sure the seams when you're folding your bags are on the inside. So we're gonna fold over the opening side first and then fold the other side over the top here. And you know, this is gonna be dripping with juice. So we're gonna collect that and add that to the uh, total and uh, carefully uh, put it in here. Now you're gonna to wanna to center this bag to the best of your ability or both bags to the best of your ability. That looks pretty good. Make sure we got our collection uh, cup underneath there because it's already starting to drip out. And now we're going to basically feather the Norwalk so that if we, we just had to cram up go too fast, the juice is going to spray everywhere. So I'm going to kind of take a look at the back here and kind of make sure that we're coming out, you know, not super fast. And if you look at this, the stream is kind of like really kind of like going everywhere. It's kind of like a nice waterfall, but not super secure. Now we're just going to crank it all the way up as much as we can. And the rule for pressing is when you, uh, you know, when it starts to drip and you lose a constant stream, that's when you're ready to turn it off. So it looks like we got a constant stream. And one of the interesting things I notice is when you're done pressing at the end, you're pressing out almost like a clear water. So to this, to me, you know, on a single stage juicer where I put all this stuff in, it never really comes out clear. So what does that mean is the question. So anyways, uh, as you guys can see, we still got a good stream. As this is going, actually, I'll keep you filling up the next bag. Till a break stream. 
And I think the rest, we should have just basically two cups, so we should just put all the rest in the last bag here. It still is pressing up, you're hearing some of that noise there. And these presses can take a long time to juice. All right, looks like we got all that pulp there. All right, now it's finally broken the stream. Looks like we got rid of all the pulp finally. We're gonna go ahead and uh, let this baby down. And we're gonna go ahead and take out these pulp packs and we'll show you guys what these look like in a second. And we're gonna go ahead and put that last one in there. And uh, crank it up. Once again, make sure you don't do it too fast. All right, now I'm gonna give it full pressure. Full steam ahead! <laughs> all right, as you guys can see, all the juice is coming out here. We got some juice left over in this container. I'm gonna maybe pull out some of the pieces of pulp here and then we're gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this uh, right into. And now it's the waiting game. Oh, and while we're waiting, I want to talk about something really fast that I forgot to mention earlier. So in the cutting blade inside the Norwalk here, you know, they're, uh, they're, the, the stainless steel they use is uh, basically a similar stainless steel to that of a butter knife, right? And look at this. I can take this butter knife and I can flex. Oh my God, look at the flex on that, right? This is a non-hardened steel. It's not super hard, right? And so, but like on the pure, actually, it's a little bit different. They use a hardened steel, much like this high quality German steel, uh, you know, on this knife here. And if I take, try to bend this knife, I can't really bend it. It's much harder. It's gonna retain its edge much longer, which consequently means it's gonna do a better job at cutting. And oh, I should have did that for you before I pressed it out, actually. I want to show you guys the job it did at cutting, because I've tested it earlier, and before, when I did them both at the same time, uh, you know, the pure made more like a baby food consistency, like, like really falling apart, and there's like more particular chunks that actually didn't quite get ground in the Norwalk. All right, looks like we're done pressing. Let that down, and uh, let's go ahead and turn that machine off there. And now I want to show you guys the, pa the packs inside here, or basically inside the uh, bags. We'll open it up here. I mean, this is the one thing that's super impressive to me, to the press juicers here. You guys can see, I mean, literally this is like a sandwich, and it's just like literally like pressed together sun. It's like, you take this as I do on many juicers. I can squeeze this as much as I can. Oh, and I could turn the juicer on by mistake. Uh, but I can't squeeze out any more juice. I mean, this is pretty doggone dry, so it'll be interesting to see you know, if the uh, pulp is uh, drier or wetter in the pure or actually that we get more juice or less juice. So anyways, on the Norwalk here, it looks like we got actually with uh, 1,500 grams of produce, looks like we just got about four cups of juice, which is actually quite impressive. Uh, oh, and let's check the time because we're finished. Stop. Wow, man, that took like nine minutes to juice 1,500 um, grams of produce. Let's go ahead and reset. So nine minutes, I don't know, man. I think I could juice sometimes faster in my uh, juicers myself, but once again, we have to press twice. Let's see if, because you could press basically three bags at once in the pure, how much less time it takes and how much time you can save. All right, so let's get started in the pure here. Uh, turn this baby on. And hopefully it's gonna be a little bit easier time feeding the produce in the pure than in the Norwalk. Oh, and did I start this? It didn't start yet, all right, good start. All right, you guys can see the time there. Let's go ahead and feed this stuff in. I mean, this blade is super sharp. It's going through super easy. I'm not having to struggle. I just literally get them in there. I'm having no kickback. And it's just uh, basically shoving right in and uh, grinding up really, really nicely. Significantly easier than that Norwalk there. I can tell this is already going to take me less time. Let's go ahead and continue to rotate that. We 
are getting a little bit of splashing with this. I am trying to go for speed, so I'm not being super careful if you're doing this at home. You probably wouldn't try to like cram it through as fast as I am right now. But I, I could definitely say one thing. This machine is like, it's like cutting hot butter with a, with a sharp knife, right? This is just slicing through a produce really easily. And I'm actually struggling with the Norwalk. And I mean, I think this is due to the blade design. I mean, obviously it's cutting more efficiently. The blade's harder. It has more cutting teeth on there. It has those serrated blades. This is, a, this is basically a dream to use compared to that one. I think we're done with all that stuff. We're totally ground up. Move that out of the way, maybe tap this a little bit, see if we get anything else out. Nope, nothing's coming out. So let's go ahead and move that front and center there. And now let's go ahead and take our uh, press cloth here for the pure and our measuring cup. Where did I put that? We're gonna go ahead and take uh, two cups of this. And this stuff, I mean, just looking at this, this is more like a baby food mush, like a much finer consistency. And if we look at the bottom of this, there's like a lot of juice collecting in the bottom, which there was not quite as much in the Norwalk, which means to me that the, the grinding efficiency is actually much greater. So once again, we gotta fold these uh, bags properly into three seam, always on the inside. Go ahead and fill another cloth once again. It's very important only to fill the press cloth to the proper amount. If you try to like, but John, I could cram three cups in there, man. Well, you might be able to do that, but then what you're risking, you're risking like potentially busting the bag open. You're potentially risking, you know, not getting as much yield because you're gonna have too much pulp in there for the, for the liquid to have to flow through. So I do encourage you guys not to overfill your bags. All right, next bag going in. Filled up no problem whatsoever, dripping a fair bit. Let's go ahead and put it on there. As you guys can see, we got the two bags in there. And uh, you know, we still got lots of room so we could fill the one more bag. And this was not possible in the Norwalk because the chamber, the pressing chamber was already full. So pretty much we're just gonna go ahead and use the rest of this pulp in the third bag. Also the other thing I'm noticing, you know when I was filling up the bags for the Norwalk, you know, as much as I ground up 1,500 uh, grams of produce, there didn't seem like there was a full um, six cups. It seemed like I maybe had a little bit more than five and a half. And this is because in my opinion, and as you guys will learn at the end, when we take this housing apart, is that I, I believe that there's, you know, significant amounts of pulp still left in there that we're not able to get the juice out of. All right, I need to stop talking and start chalking and get this pressed up and juiced. All right, so let's go ahead and put this last uh, pack on here. Once again, very important to make this sure, this, this sure this is like centered up properly. And as you guys can see, these packs are so juicy, we're already dripping a bunch of juice out without even running the press yet. All right, I think we're good. And now we're just gonna go ahead and run the press. Once again, you can cram it up, make it go really fast, and then you're gonna wanna taper it back and slow down a little bit so you don't have a juicy mess. Now look at that stream on that, right? That stream is running a lot more easier and right in the glass, not like all conjoled and fangled and going in different directions. And now we got maximum pressure on this. Maximum pressure, and this thing is cranking out and it's still cranking more juice. So we're probably gonna have to sit here just a little bit. Oh, and while I'm doing that, we got a little bit of juice in here, so we're gonna go ahead and pour that in there as well. I mean, I think the main thing about pressing, it's kind of like a waiting game, right? You're just waiting for that, for all the juice to get pressed out. I mean, the really interesting things I see right now is, you know, on a, on a standard single stage juicer, the juice is always coming out like orange when I'm juicing carrots. On this, the initial juice was fairly good colored orange, but now I'm just literally pressing out like a clear water consistency. So does that mean like, you know, there's still nutrients left in the pulp that we're just pressing out literally the water from the carrots. And I'm, I will agree that the water from carrots are the best water on earth. And that's why I like to drink juices to remain hydrated because the, the water in the carrots or the produce that you guys are juicing 
is the best water on earth. It's filtered by the vegetables. Oh, I see it's breaking stream here. So we gotta go ahead and uh, shut this off and uh, lower it down. All right, so let's go ahead and take out these packs here. And I don't know if we could really show you like the difference between like the packs here, because I mean, it's all subjective at this point. But I could take these pa packs out actually, and wow, I mean, this is kind of impressive. I filled them up to the same capacity, and you know, um, basically when I'm looking at these, these are the, oops, these are the different ones. Like, to me, this one's a lot more flatter. Now that is uh, partially due to the fact that this pressing area is larger, so it spread the pulp out of a larger area, which means it's gonna press it down further, but it also means that because it has a larger area to press down, it's probably gonna extract more juice. I mean, I could take, once again, I could take this pulp, which seems actually drier to me than on the Norwalk, and I mean, I could press it, and I mean, no juice is gonna come out. I can't press as much as this guy, which is a two point, five tons. All right, let's go ahead and turn this off. I'm gonna stop. Even with me stop, yeah, yabbing too much and talking about the about the pulp here, it, we were at six minutes and 48 seconds, so I'm probably gonna say maybe it was around six minutes when it was actually finally done. Uh, so that was like three minutes less, so that's gonna save you like 33% uh, more time, right? So that's rather impressive. So let's go ahead and turn this baby off, and now let's go ahead and check the most important thing we want to do a close up for you guys actually on the yields that were created in each one. I mean, I could clearly see that the pure definitely made uh, more juice. All right, so let's go ahead and do a close up on the yields for you guys over here on the Norwalk side. A little bit hard to see because the carrot juice is orange and the markings on the cups are red. But if you guys look really closely right there, you can see basically we're right at the one liter mark on the Norwalk. And then moving over to the pure. The juicer actually costs less money, has more power. Did it make more juice is the question. So we look at that, there's the one liter mark right there and it's actually above the one liter mark. Uh, because it's above the one liter mark, I don't exactly know how much more juice, so we're gonna have to get another measuring cup out to uh, uh, figure that out. So now I wanna go ahead and find out how much more juice the pure juicer made. It's clear that it made more, but how much more? It's always difficult to pour out of these guys. Let's see how we could do that. We just do it very slowly and carefully. We're just gonna pour out enough so that we're back down in uh, one liter there. That's about the same. So then we have this much extra juice, right? So if I look at this up for you guys, I mean, roughly this is 100 milliliters. So the Pure made basically 1100 milliliters and the Norwalk made uh, 1000 milliliters. So 1100 versus 1000, so that's like a 10% difference. So straight up, the pure juicer in this juice off made 10% more yield when juicing the carrots and the apples. So this means that you know every time you juice, you're gonna have 10% more in the pure. Now, this is just considering first pressing, right? Most people that have cold press two-stage juicers, right? What they're gonna do is they're gonna take their press cloth that's already been pressed, they're gonna fold it over, and then they're gonna go ahead and press it again. And of course, we can surely do that. I didn't do this in this comparison because I just wanted to show you guys the first pressing, because of course in the second pressing, you're gonna get more in my estimation based on uh, running these two machines is on the second pressing, you may get a little bit more out on the pure just because it has you know, uh, more pressing power, right? So always the pure is gonna win in this juice off and the difference is you know, maybe this much, maybe a little bit less, or probably is gonna be more for you guys. It depends on the quality of the carrots and all this kind of stuff. Now I wanna to try to get into actually why the pure is actually more efficient than the Norwalk and the first thing I want to do for that, let me go ahead and move these juices out of the way now, is I take this juicer apart. So once again, easy to take apart the pure, press the button, turn this, and it comes off. And look at that. This auger is totally free and clear of any pulp. If we take this pusher out, you know, there's very little uh, pulp stuck on the pusher. If we look in this feed chute housing there, <laughs> if we look at the feed chute housing there, in, in, inside there, you guys can see, I'll kind of tip it up, there's no uh, pulp inside there. Now, there's a little bit of pulp stuck on the screen here, but if we pull out this screen right now, ugh, kind of hard to pull out the screen there, you can see the pulp stuck on the screen, and then there's a little bit of pulp here inside the auger, like that much, but now I can pretty much see through this whole uh, unit here. Now on the Norwalk, let's go ahead and pull this apart. I'm gonna have to get that little wrench, uh, which is off camera here. All right, I got the Ikea wrench here, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, spin this off if I can. Finagle this, man, this thing is not super easy to use. Ugh. 
I mean, <laughs> just for the inconvenience factor alone, man, you should get the pure. It's so much easier. All right, let's see. Well, I mean, I'm also standing behind it. All right, got it. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull out the pusher. Once again, you know, a little bit of pulp on the pusher, not too much. Let's go ahead and pull the funnel off so that doesn't happen again. I don't drop it. Take this out, and once again, you know, the auger is fairly clean actually. But uh, check out inside this chamber here, right? So looking down from the top of the chamber, you know, basically because the, this uh, pusher is flat, there's a little area because this is offset that's not getting ground up. So let's see if I could actually, let's see if I could use a pur pure pusher to push that stuff down into my hand, <laughs> which I can. And then uh, here's how much pulp is left over, right? So this is the pulp just like left over in the top of the chute. And once again, this is the, this is the pulp left in the uh, pure. So I think actually just, just with the top chute, there's more in the Norwalk that's unpressed. And that's not even to mention the bottom. So let's go ahead and pull out the, the tray here. No, we're, we're dripping pulp out the bottom. So once again, we got pulp jammed in the screen and there's a lot more pulp here in the bottom still. Let's go ahead and get that out. All right, so here's the pulp from the bottom. Here's the pulp from the top. I mean, of course, each juicer had pulp stuck in the screen, but here's the pulp left in the pure, right? There's about, I mean, there's probably like at least half as much, maybe a little bit more than half, maybe 110, 120% more pulp left inside the auger or inside the uh, grinding apparatus that you're not getting the juice of. And look at this, I can squeeze the juice. This is how much juice you're losing. This is how much juice you're losing in the pure. I mean, look at that. I, I can't really squeeze more, but this is still squeezing. <laughs> you be the juicer. All right, and we could of course take this out and push, pr push it in, but who's gonna take it apart just to get a little bit more juice out, right? It could be a pain in the butt. And once again, I mean, juicing in a two-stage, <laughs> I've been quite a mess today. All right, so the uh, last thing I want to do for you guys, actually, I want to go ahead and taste the juices that we created here. I mean, I doubt I'll taste any kind of differences here. Here's a juice from the Norwalk. Mm, it's definitely good. I mean, I've always been a big fan of a two-stage uh, juice. It's just so crystal clear and pure with like no pulp whatsoever. Now that being said, you know, I mostly drink juices out of a single stage juicer. And for me, because that's what I'm used to drinking this, to me, it's kind of like a watered down juice, you know, because as you guys saw at the end, it's literally juicing, the, the, the juice coming out is actually clear. So although I love the texture, I can't say, you know, I, I love the flavor. It's not quite as uh, flavorful for me. That being said, you know, in this particular juice, we did juice, uh, you know, a fair bit amount of apples. Yeah, I mean, saying anything, comparing these two juices is totally subjective. To me, they totally taste the same. Um, yeah, I can't really say anything about it. It's quite good. So now you guys saw, like, which juicer reigned supreme in juicing uh, carrots and apples. Of course, that was a pure. I'm gonna get, go ahead and clean the juicers out, get this uh, mess cleaned up, and we're gonna come back at you for the final uh, juice off comparison between these two machines. We're gonna juice some greens. Greens are one of the most important things you guys can be juicing. My goal every day is to juice or eat two pounds of greens. Uh, you know, a pound of it might be juiced, some of it might be blended, and of course, I eat nice large salads. So uh, let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and we'll come back and we'll be juicing some romaine lettuce and celery. All right, let's go ahead and check out the pure juicer first. Over on the pure juicer scale, we got two romaine uh, lettuces with uh, three stalks and a little bit more of celery. It looks like we got a total of 1,000 grams. And then over on the side of the Norwalk 290, once again, 1,000 grams, three stalks of celery, plus a little small piece, and two romaine heads. You guys can see there's the shot of both scales. 1,000 grams on each. So now that you guys saw, we have a fair way and we're just gonna go ahead and move these scales out of the way, get them out the way here. And uh, you know, I wanna remind you guys, I don't wanna encourage you guys to eat your leafy greens. I, I know many of you guys might be on a Gerson program doing lots of like uh, carrots and apples and whatnot. And as much as I like carrots and apples, I would encourage you guys to take it up a level, right? And instead of just getting the standard orange carrots, hey, mix in some purple carrots sometimes. They actually have much higher levels of anthocyanins. As to the greens, there's many different greens that can be cancer protective, like broccoli, for example, and other cruciferous family of plants. You know, they've shown that these plants contain isothiocyanates. 
that are actually anti-cancer. So I think they're super critical, super important, whether you juice whole broccoli or my favorite, even better, is the broccoli leaves or broccoli sprouts or even cauliflower leaves, uh, you know, kale leaves, collard greens, Brussels sprouts. These are all in the cruciferous family. Another green, very important to juice, that's also anti-cancer, is the plants in the allium family. So, you know, leeks and shallots and garlic greens and onion greens, very important. But you gotta watch out, you don't wanna be juicing too many of those because the juice can get quite strong quite quickly. Anyways, I think uh, on this time, we're gonna go ahead and first uh, process all this stuff through the pure. I'm not gonna be uh, timing it today because I'm only um, processing about 1,000 grams. I'm only gonna actually use uh, two press bags, so it's gonna be a little bit uh, quicker to juice. Uh, that being said, you know, my standard juice every day is I like to drink between 32 and 64 ounces of juice in a day. So in a pure anyways, I could pretty much juice like uh, maybe two pressings to have 64 ounces and that's gonna be pretty good. In the Norwalk, as you guys saw earlier, it's gonna be take a little bit longer. So we're juicing a little bit less this time. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, see if I got my pusher here. And uh, let's go ahead and turn this machine on and let's go ahead and feed this stuff in. So, you know, leafy greens can be one of the most challenging things to juice in a two-stage juicer. I mean, it does work and it's always best if you grind your greens up. The best way to do it is take your greens and then flip them over on themselves because it can be hard to feed in this part. And then we're just gonna shove them down this throat here. And grind them on, grind them on up. It looks like we're making a nice baby food mush right there. I mean, I'm really super impressed on how well the pure literally grinds up anything you throw at it. Really, I'm not having to push too much. It'll be interesting to see how this all works on the Norwalk. All right, now we're gonna use a pusher here. All right, I've jammed it in there. Let's see, it's uh, still pretty easy to push. I think I've over jammed, the, over jammed it a little bit. All right, no problem. Let's go ahead and throw some celery in there. Celery strings can mess up many juicers, but <laughs> not the pure. No matter what you guys are juicing, I always want to encourage you guys to rotate the produce you're juicing, you know, so as much as apples and carrots are good, there's so many different other phytonutrients and phytochemicals in many of the different uh, vegetables and fruits you can be juicing, so I would encourage you guys always to mix it up. All right, here's one big uh, stock going in. We'll put it in leaf side first. Man, that just goes in super easy. All right, last bit of the first head of lettuce there. And we'll push it in with some celery. Now this is making a really, really, really liquidy mash right here. I think this one we could almost probably stick in whole at this point. celery and no problem. I think this time we got a lot less stickage because all this stuff is pretty watery and someone's just falling out of the machine. And once again, once you're done putting all the produce in, I like to maybe pump it up a little bit. Make sure you're getting every last bit out. All right, let's move this out of the way. Always like to have a little bowl or pie plate, uh, you know, to put the pulp into before you're gonna press it so that, uh, you know, the, all the drips from the press cloth bag um, doesn't go anywhere. And this stuff is like really, really soupy, look at that. And that's what I wanted to show you guys on this texture, actually, I didn't get to show you guys last time, but on this texture, I could take it in between my fingers and uh, feel it, and I don't really fe feel any large like chunks. I mean, this would probably be more noticeable on the carrots because the carrots have a much harder um, you know, texture than say uh, the leaves or the celery does. So let's see, one scoop. We got about two scoops there. So very important, right? Don't overload the 
press bags. And you always want to center load, so you don't want all the stuff going down to the bottom. Most of the stuff's in the center, and actually the top half, or top uh, third and bottom third are empty. So we're gonna go ahead and fold over the top third, fold over the bottom third, and then go ahead and carefully stick it on there without dripping everywhere. And uh, once again, we're gonna go ahead and take that second bag there. And basically the rest of this stuff is gonna go in this bag, which is approximately two cups. One. Two. Now, of course, I did show you guys earlier how you could just literally take a press bag and actually just uh, put it on, put it on, and hang it like that, right? And uh, when you do this, then you would probably like uh, process half of this. You'd maybe process one uh, head of romaine and maybe like a one and a half pieces of celery. That way, you could save the time and save some uh, dishes from cleaning. You would just probably want to, you know, put a bowl underneath as you're juicing it because some uh, juice is going to want to drip out. So this will save you a little bit of time instead of the way I'm doing it here, which is maybe not the most uh, time efficient. <laughs> all right, that's all the pulp there. And I mean, if you look at this, we just got like literally a bowl full of, full of juice here. It's the grinder, just the grinder alone was so efficient. And you know, that's one of the things I like about uh, these two-step uh, press style machines is that the grinding extracts a lot of the juice. I mean, look at this, I could just pour this in the in the pitcher there, we've extracted a lot of juice before we even press it out. And you know, you gotta be wary of presses that actually don't come with a grinding attachment because you know they're they're not gonna get all this extra juice. Let's go ahead and pour this juice in there and tell you guys how much I got. I mean, just from the sheer act of grinding without even pressing, and I wasn't really pressing hard. We already got a cup of juice, man. Alright, so next uh, I guess the next step is make sure we got these centered up properly. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit the lever. Now we got the lever on full blast, full steam ahead. Right when we start making contact, we're going to want to feather it back and slow down so we don't bust any bags and we don't get juice everywhere. All right, and we got to go up, slow down, feather it, feather it. All right, we're so close now that we just cram it up. All right, look at this, man. This is super impressive. This is getting, I think we're almost at around three cups of juice out of the 1,000 uh, grams of lettuce and celery. And once again, we're gonna press this, and now this time we're gonna go for maximum extraction, right? We're gonna go ahead and flip the bags and see if we can get more in a second pressing. And uh, once again, you know, when the juice originally came out, it's nice, dark, and green, but now that it's coming out a little bit longer, you know, the juice is more clear. So you could be waiting a little bit for it to uh, finish pressing. Now one of the cool things about the Pure is that there's no press time limit. So if you've owned a, you know, an older Norwalk, you know, they had a 10 second press limit, you know, and in 10 seconds you're not going to get all this juice, so you have to like let it down. Luckily on the new Norwalk, they say no more 10 minute, 10 second press limit, right? But what they don't tell you is that in order to, you know, take away that press limit, they've actually lowered the pressure on the juicer so that it doesn't bust because if you press for more than 10 seconds on the older no rocks they could break on you right the new one they've lowered the pressure so it actually doesn't press as hard so you could press longer that being said as you guys saw earlier in the demo you know this juicer already presses a lot harder than the norwalk and there's no time limit on how long you could press although at a, sort, a certain point there's a point of no returns whereas you could just let it press for all you want and it's just going to sit there and dribble and you're not going to get much more so wow, this stuff is really dry, so we're just gonna go ahead and fold these over on themselves here. We're gonna go ahead and center these guys up. These guys are super dry, it's actually super impressive to me how well this has worked. We're gonna go ahead and center these babies up, and we're gonna go ahead and crank it up full steam ahead. Because we got most of the juice out of it already, we can just crank it up full blast and uh, without any problems. So let's see, we're gonna go ahead and crank it down. 2.5 uh, tons of pressure here. And look at that, this machine was so efficient the first time getting all the juice out, I mean it's barely even worth pressing a second time. And we're getting a little bit more and if you're like really cheap or something, you might want to do that but for most people you probably shouldn't waste the time, energy, or electricity, uh, you know, just to get a little bit more. I mean already a stream already broke so that's pretty much it. Alright, let's go ahead and turn that baby off. I think we got a little more juice in here, let's pour that out. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on the Norwalk this time. Hopefully it'll be easier for me to feed this lettuce in than a carrot. Carrots are a much harder consistency, 
but uh, we, we shall soon see. All right, so once again, you know, grab some of these leaves, fold these over. Now, both feed chutes on both machines are about the similar size. It'd be cool if somebody made one with a larger feed chute. So this is working significantly better. It's grinding up definitely better than the carrots. Um, you know, I do see some larger particle sizes, personally. Now, I think earlier the challenge I was having, like feeding stuff in Norwalk, and hopefully I won't have any more problems feeding stuff into the Norwalk. You know, when, when I was looking at these machines earlier, I didn't exactly explain this, but I was just showing them. But the uh, feed chute on the Norwalk, although it is offset, and as it is on the Pure, it's, they're both offset. Uh, the offset is different, actually. So the offset is larger on one than the other, and I think the larger offset, um, or the, the lesser offset on the uh, Norwalk, you know, causes some challenges. So actually, they have to take off the out offset and make it not quite as much on the Pure. So that may be the problem, because when you're kind of coming straight down on it, it doesn't maybe grind as well, and as you're coming down on the side, it's kind of chewing it off a little bit better. But yeah, still a little bit challenging for me to get in there. Right, let's go ahead and do some celery. All right, that, that went in no problem. I must say that I do like the feed shoots on these uh, two-stage press juicers because they're significantly larger than uh, most uh, single step uh, juices on the market. All right, I think we're down to the point where we just put this whole guy in there. I mean, we're getting a lot of seepage out of this uh, front part of the screen. It's kind of like dripping down. That did not happen on the Pure. bit of lettuce here going in. Got the last two pieces of celery. Oh, we got another small piece here. Alright, yeah, much easier to feed it this time. Well, once again, we're going to go ahead and pump it up and down a little bit, see if we can get anything out, because I know there's a bunch of stuff still stuck in there because of the, the flat pusher. We need our little scooper here. All right, so once again, fill these up. Two scoops. And once again, you know, normally you would just actually hang this bag on the uh, Norwalk on the little uh, doorknob hook. <laughs> All right, once again, I don't think I got as much uh, pulp produce because I think there's a lot still hanging out inside. All right, as you guys can see, we got both these pulp packs in there, man, and this, this whole pressing chamber is pretty full. Make sure we got, got these centered up pretty good. And we're gonna go ahead and crank this baby up really fast, and then we're gonna go ahead and taper it off once it starts making contact. All right, we'll let it go full force. And of course, we got some still some juice in here. All right, I think we're finally down to some drips here. Let's go ahead and lower this down. And let's go ahead and uh, fold over our pulp packs again to get into their pressing here. And crank it up full blast. Once again, even on the Norwalk after second pressing, we're barely getting any more juice out. Like, it's not even worth calling home about, seriously. <laughs> so, I mean, these juices are quite efficient on the leafy greens 
if you grind them first. All right, pretty much broke stream. Let's go ahead and let this baby down. Turn this off, and uh, let's go ahead and give you guys our front and center uh, the yield comparison test. All right, just looking at looking at it, I could definitely see the pures created more, but the question is how much more. Let's go ahead and take a look at the yield. So over on the pure juicer side, there looks like we got the juice zooming right in. Looks like we got about 800 milliliters of juice. And over on the Norwalk side over here, let's see if we look really closely, looks like we got about uh, 750 milliliters of juice. Not a significant difference, but there's still a difference favoring the pure juicer. So as you guys can see, the pure juicer made more than Norwalk. Now this is not a whole lot to write home about, but it was about 6% difference, you know, and 6% can add up over time. The other thing I'd like to do is actually show you guys the pulp. I mean. This is super impressive to me, just how dry the pulp in here is. Let's go ahead and pull this out. I mean, this stuff is super killer dry. I mean, this would be perfect to feed your worms. Most people feed worms like wet pulp and wet produce, and it gets the worm bins way too moist, right? But this is a pretty good moisture content for the worms here. Not too moist, not too dry, just dry enough. And once again, I'm gonna try to squeeze this with all my might, and I, I can't squeeze anything out, so I mean, Definitely the two-stage hydraulic press juicers, if the most important factor is for you is getting the driest yield, these are the machines that'll do it. Furthermore, you know, I think I really like these hydraulic press down machines for berries and juicing fruits the best. A lot of fruits will just mush up in most juicers and they don't necessarily get high yields. With these ones, they get the pulp really dry and ex expel, you know, probably some of the highest yield of juice out of the fruits. I mean, every juicer has their pros and cons, and as you guys learned in this, while both these machines seem to operate similar, each of them have their pros and cons. Of course, you know, the Pure was less money, it uh, worked a bit better, it ground up better, it actually got a higher yield, you know, the parts are much more improved, there's less uh, lines and, uh, you know, uh, pieces of sheet metal, it's all like one piece solid, and actually I was like working today and I think I cut my finger on the sheet metal right here on the Norwalk, you know, that's kind of a little bit dangerous and like it's never going to happen on the Pure because it's all totally rounded and I really like how there's basically no nooks and crannies where juice is going to drip in, it's going to get, um, you know, stuck and eat hard to clean. Also there's no those uh, screw holes, I like how there's no screw holes up here. I mean, just the, the power is more, gets more juice, it's less expensive, they both have 12 year warranties. Oh and another thing I want to mention is uh, you know, should you have to buy replacement parts that are not covered under warranty, such as the, uh, you know, the press tray here, this is known as a consumable part, much like the brakes on your car, right? They will bend over time, if you, especially if you're not using it right and they're not adjusted properly. And if you got to buy replacement parts, uh, you know, in general, the parts for the pure juicer are less than the Norwalk. So, you know, you're going to save money by buying now, and then if you have to buy replacement parts, you're going to save more money later. In addition, as you guys saw, the press cloths and the press bag quality was much greater. They flow more, flow more juice and they're much stronger so you're less likely to break them. Because let me tell you, once you break a bag, it'll almost stop you from juicing and using bags again. But with the pure bags, you know, you're not gonna have as high of a breakage issue because they've engineered and designed these properly to withstand the power that their pure juicer uh, can exert upon it. And I would say if you guys have Norwalk bags and they break a lot, hey, get some pure bags use them in your Norwalk, you know, that'd probably be a good thing to do. So I guess at the end of this juice off, before I end off, I want to um, go ahead and taste the juice, very important to me. I mean, I can't see how these juices would be any, any, any significantly different because we're pretty much uh, doing the same exact technique, grinding and pressing out the juice. Mm. Actually, that's not a bad juice, you might think, that's going to be nasty, John. The romaine actually is, is pretty much like water, it's like drinking water and the same thing with the celery. This is a great and excellent water replacement. The other thing I'd, I'd do personally is I'd probably add some cucumber into this recipe and that would take it over the top. I mean, really nice and mild juice. Let me go ahead and drink the rest of this one. And now for the Norwalk juice. Yeah, no discernible taste difference. So, I mean, yeah, these juicers produce the same juice. Um, 
probably the same juice quality. But overall, I think, you know, looking at it and running the machines now, I, I hope you guys saw the difference in quality <laughs> of the machines. You know, the Pure seems to be a much higher quality machine, better thought out and well designed. That, in my opinion, is probably going to give you less problems in the future. And even since the Pure, the original Pure uh, machine, the pre production machine I had when it came out, they've made significant improvements to it at this point. And, you know, uh, I think they're going to do significant more improvements in the future to make it even better, you know, as they learn new things. And I would encourage every company, whether that's Norwalk or other juicer companies, always to raise the bar and make the machines better, right? If you have the best machine, guess what? You're gonna sell more machines, but more importantly, the customer, which is me, because I juice every day, or you, is gonna have an easier juicing experience with less stress. And it's gonna be easier to clean, you're gonna get a higher yield, and it's just gonna make for a happier juicing experience. So with that, I want to declare the winner of this Juice Off comparison test today. And to me, the winner is clear. Hands down, the Pure Juicer is the winner of this Juice Off comparison. Not only is it less expensive, not only did it make more yield, not only is it better and well designed, it was just funner to use. And it's just quite evident by this video today. So hopefully, um, you know, now you know, if you're looking to buy Norwalk or Pure, know that they're basically the same exact thing, but this is a more improved version of even the brand new Norwalk 290. Um, never imitated, maybe duplicated in some ways. But yeah, and if you guys are looking to buy a Pure Juicer, uh, be sure to visit our website, discountjuicers.com. We sell the Pure Juicer as well as many other juicers on the market. And if the Pure Juicer is just out of your price range, hey, we sell so many other juicers that are lesser in cost, right? And I would always encourage you guys, right, if you're you're gonna save some money, $400 at present time or 15% um, over buying a Norwalk if you get up here and then use that $400 to grow a garden, right? If you get a lesser expensive machine, like you know one of the single step machines that's $500 or $400 instead of buying this, use it $2,000 to put in a garden. Gardening is one of the best things you could do because besides getting the highest yield and the most nutrition out of the produce you're juicing, it's very important to start with the highest quality produce and unfortunately most of the produce you're buying at the store, even if it is organic, it's not the highest quality. You could grow significantly higher quality food at home by adding things like rock dust, making sure you use worm castings and many other gardening techniques. And plus, that being said, you're going to save a lot of money in food costs because like, I have a full garden in my backyard. I don't need to go to the store to buy a head of romaine lettuce. I got 150 heads of romaine lettuce in my backyard right now. I can harvest, right? It's free. I can juice all I want. And guess what? When you buy a head of romaine lettuce, once you juice it, it's gone. If you plant a romaine lettuce plant or you know plant the seeds, it grows the lettuce and you could go out there and pluck a couple leaves off the side of the lettuce every day. And basically, you're, it's like picking money because once you plant it, you know, the lettuce plant, depending on what kind you grow, could grow for 90 days and you could have 90 days of greens from one planting, right? So yeah, I want to encourage you guys to grow some gardens and grow some high quality food so you can have every possible advantage so that you guys could heal because that's what I'm all about, right? Getting every possible advantage. I'm only here today because my life was saved because of juicing and massive dietary changes to eat the healthiest foods on the planet, which are fruits and vegetables. And I juice and I also grow some food. So I really want to encourage you guys to uh, you know, consider that as well along in your journey in, of health. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. If you make your purchase at discountjuicers.com, this allows me to continue to make these crazy juice off comparisons and uh, all the other videos I make on YouTube for you guys. If you buy from anywhere else, I'm not gonna get the credit and I might not be able to make these cool comparisons in the future. So I wanna thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that will purchase from me. And I wanna thank you all you guys that have purchased from me in the past so I can continue this work that I'm so passionate about today. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that's interested in buying a Norwalk so they can truly see that the Pure is definitely better than the Norwalk. Also, be sure to click the subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes. I have several more videos coming out uh, about the Pure Juicer, including an um, episode where I'm going to interview the owner of Pure that created the Pure Juicer and ask him a lot of cool questions on why he created this and why he would want to do this. Because let me tell you, it's a lot of work to create a juicer and it's something that I would never <laughs> want to do myself. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Aside from this uh, video uh, comparing the Pure to the Norwalk, I've compared the Pure to many other different kinds of juicers on the market so you guys can learn truly the best juicer for you. So finally, I want to encourage you guys to check my other videos. I have over 500 videos on this YouTube channel comparing and contrasting and, uh, all the different kinds of juicers on the market at this time as well as blenders and other de uh, food dehydrators that allow you to get more fresh fruits and vegetables in you. 
So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. Thank you.